MegCram.com. Well, welcome to another MegCram video. Here we've got our next EKG, which we're going to talk about. We're going to go through this in a methodical fashion using our tried and true technique of rate, rhythm, axis, hypertrophy, and then looking for ST segments. So first up is figuring out rate, and we can see here we've got the QRS complex and a QRS complex here. What we're doing is we're looking at how many boxes are between it, and it's a little bit more than one, but less than two. In fact, it's a little bit less than one and a half. So if we take 300 and divide it by less than one and a half, we're gonna be in the approximately the 160s to 170s. The other way to look at it is to look at the number of QRS complexes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28, and multiply it by 6. So if we go 28 times 6 is going to give us a total of about 168 beats per minute. So that's where we come up with the number of beats per minute. Remember, this is a 10 second strip. And so if we multiply it by six, we'll see how many times you'll have it in one minute. So that's rate. Let's look at rhythm next. And for rhythm, we're going to look at each of these QRS complexes and see if there's P waves, see if they're regular, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things I think that's interesting, what we'll do here is zoom up. You can see here very clearly that there's a little P wave after each QRS complex, which is kind of interesting, right? You can also see a little notching right there after each QRS complex. And what's going on here, this is very fast, so you have tachycardia, as, a, as we've already said, but it's also very regular. And there's P waves after the QRS complex. This type of a pattern you'll see in AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. So I think that's what's going on here with the rhythm. So here we have the rate of 168. We have a rhythm of AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. The next thing is to go on to axis. So the thing again to remember on axis, if we draw a nice circle, remember that the line going out this way is lead one, and the line going down this way is AVF. So if we look at lead one, we can see here that it's very positive. Obviously, these are positive QRS complexes. And so we're going to be in this direction over on the right-hand side of the screen, but on the left-hand side of the patient. And then in terms of AVF, we can see clearly here that we're dealing with a slightly negative QRS complex. And so therefore, we're going to be going opposite, so kind of in this direction. And so it looks as though that the vector that we're going to be talking about is slightly negative. And as, as in fact, as it turns out, the computer measures it out at negative 8. So negative 8 degrees going this direction is very close to almost being right on to AVL. Okay, And you can see here that AVL is probably one of the most positive leads. Similarly, 90 degrees to AVL is this one right down here, which is lead two. And so because we know that the, the vector is going almost parallel to AVL, that any lead perpendicular to the vector is gonna look isoelectronic. So let's see if it is isoelectronic in lead two. And sure enough, we go to lead two, and you can see here that for the most part, what we're dealing with here is isoelectronic. And so that makes sense that our ventricular axis is going to be slightly left, maybe a little bit of left ventricular hypertrophy there at negative 8. The axis is negative 8 degrees. Let's move on to hypertrophy and ST segment changes. So we're going to zoom up and look at those precordial leads. We can't really see if there's any atrial hypertrophy because of the AV nodal reentrant tachycardia in nature. But if we look at V1, we're looking for right ventricular hypertrophy. And specifically, is the R wave bigger than the S wave? And in this case, it's certainly not. So there's no evidence for right ventricular hypertrophy. But then in looking for left ventricular hypertrophy, what we're doing there is we're counting up the size of the S wave, which in this case is 10, 11, 12 millimeters. And now we're counting up and looking at the R wave in lead V5. And the R wave in lead V5 looks like it's 5, 6, 7 
millimeters. And we can see here that 12 plus 7 is a total of 19. And 19 millimeters does not meet the criteria for 35 millimeters. And so therefore, there is no evidence of right ventricular or left ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, what about ST segment depression? Well, we can see here that there is some ST segment depression in lead V1. It seems to be more pronounced in 2, in 3, and also in AVF, not to mention in V5, V4, also a bit in V6. There's some upsloping here in V3, though the J point is not exactly clear. It seems to be less in the V1 and V2 area, but certainly in the inferior and also in the lateral leads, we're starting to see some ST segment depression. It could be because of ischemia from tachycardia from the AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, but definitely seeing some ST segment depressions there. So to summarize, no hypertrophy seen, but there is some ST segment depression in the 2, 3, and AVF, and also in V5 and some of those uh, lateral leads. So we've gone through it pretty systematically, and we found this uh, AV nodal reentrant tachycardia with a heart rate in the 160s with a left ventricular axis deviation, no hypertrophy, and ST segment depression in the inferior leads and the lateral leads. Thanks for joining us. 